So Debbie and Trixie is right around the corner. It's going to come out here in just a couple of months as I record this. And if you're thinking about spending any time on Debbie and Trixie or dedicating your next two years of your Linux life on Debbie and Trixie, you should know what you're getting into. So what I want to do today is talk about how old Debian actually is. And what I mean by that is I'm going to compare Debian, which is Debian, and OpenSUSE, which is a rolling release. Now, a couple things before we jump into this comparison. First, I'm not bashing Debian. I'm not saying anything's wrong with older software. There are legitimate reasons for choosing a Debian-based distribution, or Debian itself. And the main one is stability. By using older software and dedicating yourself to that track, you're not going to be the guinea pigs of the Linux community like the folks on Arch or OpenSUSE are. So we, the, I mean, I'm talking about the OpenSUSE guys and the Arch guys, are much more likely to experience bugs because we get the newer software. Now, I don't think that's a bad thing either. So really, it just depends on which track you kind of want to go down. Now, if you are interested in the whole stable versus rolling release distro thing, I've made a couple videos about that. So you can find those on my channel. So what we're going to do today is just compare five or so programs and kind of look at, see where the versions are on a late stage Debian install and a current updated version of OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Basically what this should tell you is just how far you're going to be behind if you stuck on Debian Trixie two years from now. So let's go ahead and jump in, but before we do, go ahead and leave a thumbs up on this video. I'd really appreciate it, it'd really help the channel. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button. I make Linux content two or three times a week and I think it's pretty good. And if it's not, you can always unsubscribe and head somewhere else. So let's go ahead and jump in. So here I have a OpenSUSE install on the left and a Debian install on the right. I won't change this up at all. It won't really matter, but just know that the OpenSUSE Tumbleweed is on the left, Debian is on the right. So the first app that I'm going to check is Audacity. Now, this is a fairly common application for people to download, and it's also one that doesn't update very often, but it does, or it is fairly maintained. So let's take a look at what the version is on Debian. So I'm going to do apt search Audacity like so, and it's going to run its check, and you'll see that it has the stable version of Audacity at 3.2.4. So I'm going to move over here to my OpenSUSE machine, I'm going to do the same thing, I'm going to do a search for Audacity. Now the commands here will be a little bit different because I have some aliases going on, and obviously OpenSUSE uses zipper while Debian uses apt. So I'm just going to search for that, and we'll see that Audacity has a version on OpenSUSE of 3.7.3. That's several versions ahead. Now, all of this is expected. We're not doing this again to bash Debian for being behind. I just want to make it clear that if you're going to be on Debian, you're going to be in this situation two years from now if you choose to switch to Debian Tr Trixie, which is version 13. Now, this is going to be almost across the board for your software stuff, right? So you're going to always expect this, but we'll keep testing just to make sure that that's always true. So the next one we're going to search for is going to be Kden Live. So we'll do Kden Live on there and we'll do Kden Live on here. Kden Live on Debian is 22.12.3. On OpenSUSE it's 25.04.1. So again, quite a big difference there. The next one I'm going to be checking is GIMP. And this is going to be interesting because GIMP has just recently released their 3.0 version. And that's like a big, big version. So this is something that you might want. And this is going to showcase the perils of using something like Debian. I don't, perils may not be the right word, but the, the consequences, it may, that's even still too negative, I suppose. Uh, it, it's going to kind of represent the downside of using a more slowly updated distribution like Debian in that you're going to be stuck with older software and you might have to look at someone else who has this brand new shiny version of GIMP that has a whole bunch of new features and you just aren't going to have it for two years. So on OpenSUSE, if I search for GIMP and we're going to get a whole bunch of output here, so we're going to have to kind of scroll up and deal with some dual line wrapping stuff here. But the number one here is GIMP and that has a version of 3.0.2. If we do apt search on Debian for GIMP, we're going to get, again, quite a few 
outputs here, but I believe it's all the way at the beginning. Yep, this is at 2.10.34. So not actually as significantly behind as you'd expect because they jumped from 2.10.3 something to 3.0. So it's not, it's not like there's like 90 versions of GIMP that you're behind. So I want to make that 100% clear. The prop, more likely three or four because they, I think they reached like twice a year or something like that before this. So just know that you're not exactly as far behind as it looks like it is. But again, it's still behind as you'd expect it to be. The next one I'm going to be looking at is Tilex. Tilex is a fairly popular terminal emulator. So we're going to do an SE for Tilex on OpenSUSE. And we'll see that it's at version 1.9.6. Now, this is going to be another interesting one because Tilex isn't actually updated very often, if at all. So it'll be interesting to see what Tilex is on Debian. So we're going to do sudo, we don't need sudo, apt search Tilex, like so. And it tells us that we're on version 1.9.5. So it's exactly one version behind, it looks like, on Debian compared to OpenSUSE. Now, again, like I said, Tilex isn't updated very often, but even still, you're finding yourself just a little bit behind on Debian where, compared to where you would be on a rolling release. And the last one I want to look at is i3 Window Manager. So I'm going to do app search i3-wm, which is what it's called here on Debian. The version there is 4.22 on OpenSUSE, the version is, I'm gonna actually have to scroll up here a little bit. The version is 4.24, which is right here. I know that's kind of hard to read. So again, it's a couple versions ahead. So, so the reason why I wanted to make this video, again, wasn't to bash Debian, but I, I think it's, it's very important if you're going to choose a distribution like Debian, that you understand that this is gonna be the situation that you're going to be in. Now, you're not gonna be actively comparing to something else. Like you're not gonna have these things side by side. But you should keep in mind if you're going to make that switch or if you're gonna remain on Debian, whatever, that you're going to be experiencing the fact that you're going to be a little bit further behind than anyone who uses something like OpenSUSE or Arch or something like that. Now you thought I was gonna leave you in that state and I'm not because there's actually a very good way to get around all of this and that's to use Flatpak. If you decide to use Debian, but you want the more recent version, install Flatpak and then install all the, the applications through FlatHub and you'll find that you have probably more up-to-date software than even OpenSUSE has because oftentimes FlatHub is the more official version of that software. I know that's true for OBS, Audacity, and several others that just update at FlatHub sooner than on many distro repositories. So. The cheat trick here is to use Flatpak and FlatHub together to get past some of the old stuff if you need to. A lot of people don't need to, they don't care. And that's the reason why they've chosen Debian, it doesn't really matter to them, they just wanna be able to get on their computer, do their stuff and, and go away, right? So if you find yourself in a situation where you do say want GIMP 3.0, but Debian's not going to get it for two years, say, say you, you were, you know, we were still in that cycle, you could install GIMP from FlatHub and find yourself with GIMP 3.0 long before anyone else who gets it from the Debian repositories would actually receive it. So I think that there's a good mixture of being able to use Debian, have the stability that it offers, and use Flatpak alongside it and kind of experience the whole rolling release thing in terms of your software and have the best of both worlds. I think that that's truly the best way to experience Debian and it gives you a phenomenal experience. It allows you to just be as up-to-date as you want to be while staying as stable as could be. So it's just absolutely the best. So that is it for this video. If you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I've actually recorded this video once because the last one came off as really unfair. Like, Matt, why are you comparing these things? It doesn't make any sense. I, I wanted to do this just so that you can kind of see, again, where you're going to be if you choose this path. So that's it for this one. You can follow me on Mastodon. That link will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. There you'll get a weekly exclusive podcast. So if you're interested in hearing me sit in front of this microphone for about 15 minutes or so each week just talking about random stuff and that interests you again, you can go to Patreon or YouTube and support me there with their membership programs and you can get that along with several other benefits. You can also head on over to the store, which is available at shop.delinuxcast.org. There you'll find awesome hats like this one or the I Love Vim hat, along with a whole bunch of t-shirts and all sorts of other stuff. That's available at shop. 
www.thelinuxcast.org. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very much for your support. So seriously, I'm getting choked up. Thank you so very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. And I just don't, I, I can't say thank you enough. So thanks everybody for watching. I hope you have a good day and I'll see you next time.